What's up everybody, so I'm out on the boat today and a few things have changed. This is our boat now. Oh my god. <laughs> So as you can see outside, we are now tied to a dock. So this is the dock we're tied to now. It's actually a private dock and it's working out pretty good. Currently we just have the fenders just attached to the poles like that. And that's just temporary because we're going to be making fender boards today so we can make a much better solution than just tying the fenders off like that. We've also got a bit of cleaning to do because this boat hasn't had a good wash in a while and it actually just got a little bit of dusting from some uh, some concrete <laughs> because the house that this dock belongs to is actually under construction and they just poured the cement pad for it. So our whole deck kind of has this little dusting of concrete over it but it should come off with some water. It should be fine. So dockage in Marathon, as you might assume, is pretty expensive. So marinas charge a lot of money just to put your boat here. So that's why we weren't in a marina, and we were on the mooring ball at City Marina, which is just a mooring field, essentially. City Marina is actually the most affordable place to keep your boat. It's like $350 a month for a mooring ball there, but the one catch is you have to live aboard. So when we moved off the boat, we really didn't have a place to put our boat that was affordable for us. Because of that, we ended up anchoring it in an anchorage that was in about eight feet of water. And we thought that that would be okay, but it ended up being far from okay. The holding was actually horrendous and we ended up dragging a lot while we were there. So we ended up kind of doing an emergency move to where we are now. The holding at our anchorage was actually so bad that even with our oversized Mantis anchor, 200 feet of chain and eight feet of water, we were still dragging. I ended up realizing why the holding was that bad. It was the fact that the actual bottom was six inches to a foot of silt and grass on top of basically flat rock. It was almost like trying to pull an anchor that's meant to dig into the ground in like a parking lot that's completely flat concrete. There's just nothing for it to hold on to. Our last video you saw that we were wrapped around those engine blocks. We ended up dragging a little bit before we got wrapped around those engine blocks and we attribute it to maybe we didn't have enough scope out. So after we got off the engine blocks, we ended up putting more scope out but the very next night, it got up to only like 15 knots and we ended up dragging almost 200 feet through the night. Because we couldn't trust the anchor and we couldn't trust the holding in that anchorage, we decided that we needed to do something else and fast. That led me to put out a Facebook post in a locals group asking for a private dock that we could rent and a couple people actually reached out and we ended up at this one which was the best deal for where it is and the price obviously. We're paying less for this private dock than we would have been if we were on a mooring in City Marina. Once we confirmed that we had a place to put the boat, Randy and I kind of executed an emergency emergency move and move the boat here as fast as possible just so that our anxiety level could go way down. And now that we're tied to a dock and not in an anchorage where we run the risk of dragging into shore, I think we can sleep a little better at night. So obviously our biggest mistake was anchoring the boat in an anchorage and expecting the holding to be better than it was. But I feel good about our decision to find a private dock that was affordable. I feel good about it being here. It's going to make basically doing projects on the boat way easier. And the fact that the house that the dock is behind is under construction, they're not really gonna care if I'm running power tools and that kind of thing as well. I know I'm kind of rambling on, but today's gonna be kind of a mixed bag of things. There's not really gonna be a big project I'm doing. It's just gonna be kind of one of those reality of owning a boat episodes, you know, just the things that you have to do when you move from obviously an anchor to a dock, things you gotta think about. The first thing that I'm thinking about is obviously how we're gonna tie off. We're only able to tie off to one side, and we have to think about tides. So we've gotta be able to allow enough movement of the boat in the lines. So we gotta leave them a little bit slack so that the boat can go up and down with the tides because this is not a floating dock. And then also I have to think about the best solution for fenders, which I think in our case, which you'll see in a minute, is gonna be big long fender boards on two locations on the boat. One of the biggest things I'm thinking about when I'm docking, especially up next to like a static dock like this, is how far the solar arch sticks out from the boat. Now, it was done this way because we had to accommodate such big solar panels right here, and it's not really a problem if we just take this into account. I have to actually put some fenders and a fender board right here, which will keep the solar arch far enough away so that it doesn't rub up or hit any of these poles right here. So there's gonna be a fender board here, basically protecting this part of the boat, the stern part of the boat, and the solar arch. And then I'm gonna put another fender board right about here. And that's going to be the main fender board that is basically going to probably get the most abuse. But 
it's going to be right up against that pole right there. I don't really see a need for another fender board on the bow. If we tie this off right, the bow should never be allowed to actually come so close to the dock that it would hit. So I've got my fenders there, there, down there, another one over there, and I've got my boards laying right here. Let's get to work. This is just untreated pine, so perfectly okay for the wood dust or the wood shavings to go in the water or in the environment. There's no chemicals at all, it's just, just wood. I went ahead and loosened up the bow line just to show you basically the idea behind a fender board and how it's going to protect the stern here. Now, under normal circumstances, if that bow line up there is tight, this shouldn't actually come in contact with the dock because the bow line is holding it in that manner. However, with that loosened up, I can kind of show you why I put this here just as a backup for protection. So I pull the boat close to me. That's how the fender board works. And it keeps the tower a decent enough distance away from the pole. It protects the side of the boat. And that board comes in contact with this, which is actually concrete, so it's not gonna harm it. And it protects a nice five foot section of the hull there, which is more than what you can say for one of these fenders or even two of them. So that's why I like fender boards for this situation. So I just have one more primary fender board to put right here. That one's gonna be coming in contact with this pillar much more often because it's at the center of the boat, it's midships. So the boat's at absolute, pretty much high tide right now. So that's about as high as it's gonna go. I've got the boat tied off the way that it should be tied off. And this fender board should pretty much not even come close on the aft. It's just there as a precaution, like I was saying before. So yeah, that's as far as it's gonna go. It doesn't touch. What happens is that middle fender board touches and then that line, that bow line over there kind of prevents the stern from coming any closer. And that's what you want. Now, if I was crazy thorough, I probably would put another fender board right here, but I think that for now that's going to be enough. If I decide it's not, then I'll put another one right there. Won't be a big deal. But this shouldn't touch either, so I'm going to pull the boat close. And what should happen is the opposite effect should happen. The stern line should prevent this bow area from, yeah, so there you go. So that's, it's not going to get any closer than that. Looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get that dinghy off the deck, put it in the water, and I'm gonna start washing the boat, washing the deck, getting that concrete off, getting all the salt off. Haven't had access to fresh water in a long time, so there's probably a lot of salt on the boat that needs to come off. All right, guys, I went to lunch, and when I came back, there were workers on the property, so I didn't want to continue working on the boat while there were workers working on the property. So I took a break up until now. It's about six o'clock. The low tide is supposed to be at 7, so I wanted to be here at the very lowest of the low tides just to see how much slack we need to put out for the line. So I'm going to get back to that in a little bit, but for now, I'm going to wash the deck. I'm going to get all the salt and grime off. I'm also going to get that light dusting of cement off of the deck here, so let's do it. What's up everybody? Unfortunately, I'm having to finish out this video on my cell phone because I had a little mishap with the GoPro yesterday. And that's also why you didn't get to see the oh so interesting time lapse of me washing the deck of this boat. Now, I'm at the boat, the deck is clean, it's tied off properly, I adjusted the lines and everything like that, and the fender boards are done and it's the next day. Now I just have a couple more things I wanna talk about before I close out this video and those things are motor related. Now if you take a look at the way this motor is mounted, you might notice that these bolts and these nuts don't really look right. It's actually supposed to have one nut on top here. And this nut right here is supposed to be in between this piece and this piece. Now every bolt is basically installed wrong and unfortunately that's my fault. I was just in such a hurry to get the boat in the water and to get it functional that I didn't think about it properly and I didn't read the instructions properly. But what 
having a nut on the bottom and on the top does is it actually allows for shaft alignment while you're underway. Now, because I installed this wrong, I literally cannot align the motor while underway. That's kind of a problem because we've been getting a vibration at anything over half throttle, and we should be able to fix that by aligning the motor while we're underway. I mean, that's what the electric yacht instructions tell us to do, basically motor the boat and then come down here and adjust those bolts and you know keep adjusting them until there's no more vibration. But we can't do that. And we really can't pull the motor either while we're in the water because we installed a PSS shaft seal and it doesn't really allow us to be able to pull the motor without you know a bunch of water coming into our boat. So basically that means we have to haul out at some point if we want to fix the shaft alignment and the motor alignment and fix that vibration, which is kind of annoying. The reason I'm talking about this is because on the way here from the anchorage, we were getting a lot of vibration. It was also exacerbated by the fact that there was a bunch of sargassum or uh, seaweed in the water. But it, yeah, I mean, it was just something I was thinking about the entire time we were here. I'm like, I really wish I could fix that vibration. I really wish I can fix that vibration, but I can't. We're not gonna be moving the boat very much now that we're at the dock. We're gonna be working on it a lot. I definitely wanna haul out at some point soon just so that we can pull the motor, reinstall it properly. And then I actually want to get rid of the PSS shaft seal, the dripless that we installed. Now let me explain a little bit why I don't like the dripless for our setup. We ended up installing a dripless just because I mean, it seemed like that's what everybody was doing. <laughs> I don't know. It, it just seemed like everybody really liked him. So we ended up installing one. However, I think we have an issue with our boat where it makes it not really that compatible. And the issue is the fact that our shaft log, I don't think is completely aligned. I think the crooked shaft log is creating a situation where it's affecting the way the bellows provides pressure on the ceiling surface of the dripless. And because the bellows is providing uneven pressure, again, because of that crooked shaft log, it, the dripless is actually kind of oscillating when we're underway and the shaft is turning. And I know that that's not supposed to happen. You can kind of see here, I have the motor under low power at the dock just to spin the shaft. And you can kind of see here what I'm talking about with that oscillation on the dripless. It's the bellows and the graphite ceiling surface that's actually moving. Maybe I'm overreacting, but that oscillation on the drip list is making me want to go back to a traditional stuffing box. And I think that's what we're going to do if we take the time to haul the boat and reinstall the motor. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys. I know it was kind of all over the place and I didn't really do any real major projects in this video. However, that's just kind of the reality of owning a sailboat. You can't always do big projects. Sometimes things like moving the boat to a dock so that you don't drag an anchor take precedence over doing projects. So as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell if you want to know each and every time we upload a video. See you guys. I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on Come sit here with me by the fire And let it go